So, period prevalence, the prevalence of two times, time one and time two. So, C is the number of prevalent cases at the beginning of the time period, I, the number of incidence cases that developed during the period, and N is the size of the population for this, uh, that time period. So, over here, that is an example. Point prevalence time one. This is time one, and uh, this is the case. So, there are two cases. And later on, at time two, one, two, three, four, new cases were developed. So, that is time two. So, at time one, the total cases are 10. So, at time one, there were 10 people, and two were the cases. And at time uh, prevalence, at time two, three new cases were developed. So, the total cases were. 6 upon 10, that becomes 60%, time 1 and time 2. So that is period prevalence. What impacts prevalence estimate? All new cases in migration, in migration will increase the prevalence. Early deaths, cavers, and out migration will decrease the prevalence. So cases existing at one point in time. And these are gaining. In migration is the gaining in prevalence. And these are the losses, the cavers, the early deaths, and the out-migration are the losses. That will decrease the prevalence. What factors can increase prevalence? Longer duration of the disease will definitely, the people who live longer with the disease, that will increase the prevalence. Prolongation of life without caver, if the people cannot be caver, but they live longer life, that, that will also increase the prevalence. If there are new cases, that will also increase the prevalence, that is incidence. In migration of cases, if the people come to that population with the disease, that will increase the prevalence. Out migration of healthy people, if those people who are healthy and they migrate out of that uh, area where there is a prevalence of the disease, that will also increase. In migration of susceptible host, if the people who are susceptible to earlier develop to, to disease, they develop quickly that will also increase the prevalence. And better diagnosis and reporting, if there is a strong report system and there are better laboratories, they can diagnose the people, that will also increase the prevalence. And what are the factors that decrease the prevalence? The disease with a shorter period of time, when you reach the community, the disease will disappear. The most majority of the people will get, will get recovered. High case fatality, if there is a high case fatality, mean the disease people are dying earlier, so that will also decrease. Decrease incidence if there, there, there are less cases to be added to the prevalence that will also decrease. In migration of healthy people, if there are people who are healthy and they come to that population, that will decrease. Out migration of cases, if the diseased people go out of that population where the prevalence is high, that will decrease. And improve care rates, if there is modalities available and the people are being covered, then that will also decrease the prevalence. Persons years of observation and 10 years heart disease research project. These are number of subjects and these are length of observation. 30 people were observed for 10 years, 10 people were observed for nine years, seven for eight years, two for seven years and one for one year. Now the heart attacks observed during 10 years were five. What will be the incidence density? That is a question and very easy. If you follow 30 people for 10 years. So 30 multiplied by 10, that will be equal to 300 years. Nine multiplied by 10 is equal to 90 years. Eight multiplied by seven, 56. Two multiplied by seven, 14 and one. So you have to add up all these and then you have to put in the uh, denominator. So this is the solution. In 2003, 44, Two, three, two new cases of acquired immunodeficiency syndrome were reported in the United States. The population of the US in 2003 at risk was approximately uh, this magnitude and calculate the incidence rate of AIDS in 2003. So it is simple accumulative incidence. Numerator all the cases and denominator is the total population at risk. And the incidence rate would be this is the numerator, this is the denominator, multiplied with a constant, and it becomes 15.21 of AIDS per one lake population. So that is a cumulative incidence. 
Diabetes follow-up study included two and eight diabetic women and three, eight, two, three non-diabetic women. By the end of the study, 72 of the diabetic women and five, one, one of the non-diabetic women had died. The diabetic women were observed for a total period of 1862 persons years and the non-diabetic were observed for a period of 36,053 persons years. Calculate the incidence density or incidence rate of death. So here it is a clear cut incidence rate or incidence density. The reason is you have given the person's years uh, time, that is the person's years, you have to put these in the uh, denominator. So that is the solution for diabetic women and uh, that is uh, an answer for the non-diabetic women. Here you have to take the cases and here you have to take the person's years time and then multiply with a constant. So what does this mean? That if you follow 1000 people for a period of one year, there will be 38.6 or 39, uh, 39 new cases in that population. And here, 13.9 per 1,000. So when you uh, follow 1,000 persons for a period of one year, you will get 13.9 cases. Risk, the likelihood that individual con will contract a disease or will develop a disease that is called a risk. Approach to the measurement of excess, excess risk a ratio of risk, risk in exposed over risk in non-exposed. Differences in risk, risk in exposed minus risk in non-exposed. That, that is the difference and that is ratio of risk. Ratio of risk, risk in exposed over risk in non-exposed over risk in non-exposed people. So that is ratio of risk and that, that is a difference of risk. Relative risk, when you divide Risk and expose over risk and non expose that becomes relative risk. So, over here, that is risk and expose, incidence and expose, incidence and non expose. When you divide this with this, that will uh, give you a relative risk. So, take it ahead. This is a table and this is the data. If you calculate, this is the incidence of the disease huh? over smoker over smoker were exposed and that is that is the incidence of diseases in non exposed people non smoker so when you divide this one with this one that will become 1.61 and how to interpret this it means that those people who were exposed to a certain factor they are 1.1.6 time more uh, at risk to develop the disease as compared to the non exposed people it means that the, uh, the people who are exposed to the risk factor, they are more likely to develop the diseases compared to the non-smoker or non-exposed people. And further taking it ahead, if the relative risk is equal to one, it means there is no association between the disease and the risk factor. If it is less, more than one mean, there is a positive association between the disease and the risk factor. The people who are who will expose to that risk factor, they will likely to develop the disease. And if it is less than one, then it becomes a protective. That is a negative association between the disease and the risk factor. Odds ratio, the formula for odds ratio is AD over BC. Odds is often known as the ratio of money that may be one versus the amounts of money may be bet. In statistic and odds of an event is the ratio of the probability that event will occur to the probability that event will not occur. For example, in 100 birth, the probability of a delivery being a Y is 51%. So what will be the remaining percentage? That is 49. So 51% divided by 49% and that becomes 1.04. 1 in similar term, an odd of an event can be calculated as number of events divided by number of non-events. So they do not develop, exposed people do not develop and they develop the disease. Non-exposed people, they develop and they do not develop. So probability that an exposed person develops the disease A over A plus D. And probability that a non-exposed person develop the disease C over C plus D. Then the odds that an exposed person develops the disease A over B. An exposed person develop the disease a O over B. The odds that a non-exposed person develops the disease C is 
with the disease and D without the disease. So the something happen, something do not happen. Something happen, something do not happen. These are the exposed people and these are not the exposed people. Here is the disease, here there is no disease. That is the disease, there is no disease. Ours is the ratio of the odds of in the exposed to the odds of disease in the non-exposed. A over A plus B, A over B divided by C over D. So it becomes A D over B. So this is how we derive this formula uh, from all these what we have discussed. We have derived this formula A D over B C. History of exposed and no history of exposure cases and control. So the odds that an expose a case was exposed A over C that is history of exposure and the odds that a control was exposed. A control was exposed. So B was exposed and D was not exposed. These are odds. So odds ratio is the ratio of the odds that case was exposed to the odds that control was exposed. A over C divided by B over D. And that becomes A D over B C. Odds ratio can be calculated in a cohort study in a case control study. The exposure odds ratio is equal to the disease odds ratio. A relative risk can only be calculated in a cohort study. If a similar interpretation, uh, if odds ratio is equal to one, there is no association. Exposure is not related to the disease, then there is no association. If it is more than one, a positive association. If it is less than one, that is a protective factor, a negative association. Attributable risk is a measure of excess risk that is attributed to the exposure. Attributable risk in the exposed group equals the difference between the incidence in the exposed group and the incidence in the non-exposed baseline group. So, <clears throat> for further explanation, this is the baseline exposure uh, in exposed people and non-exposed people. For example, the genetic factor. If they have the genetic factor and they have, that is a baseline exposure. But the excess in exposed, if that, this is the part where the exposed group, uh, the disease developed in the exposed group in excess than the non-exposed group, so this axis would be called is the attributable risk. Exposed group and non-exposed. Incidence not due to exposure, the background. Incidence due to the background or baseline exposure. And this incidence is due to this exposure. So that excess exposure, uh, excess incidence is called an attributable risk. Incidence attributable to exposure or attributable risk Incidence in exposed minus incidence in non-exposed. Proportion of incidence attributable to exposure, proportion attributable risk will be equal to incidence in exposed minus incidence in non over incidence in exposed. This is the formula for calculating proportional attributable risk. An attributable risk, the formula is risk for exposed minus risk for non-exposed and risk for exposed group into 100. So if we have this data, this table, the data is given over here. This is incidence and exposed, incidence and non-exposed. So how we calculate the attribute, the first attributable risk and then uh, the proportion attributable risk. So this is basically the, uh, this one, the incidence in a smoker, which is attributable. This is attributable. The 10.6 is attributed to the excess risk. That is attributable risk. And the proportional, this one is the Proportional attributable risk means 37.9 or 38 uh, percent risk is because of the overexposure in the exposed people. If you stop the exposure, for example, cigarette smoking, you can prevent the disease. You can prevent the disease by 38 percent. It is inter interpreted like this. Thank you very much. If you have any question or query, you can uh, write in your comment if something which you do not understand or which is difficult to understand, you can give me your feedback and inshallah I will uh, give you response in your feedback, in response of your feedback so that you can clearly understand the concepts. Thank you very much. <clears throat>